Hey everybody, welcome to the video! This is going to be one of my most special videos because it's um, about my mom's passing last year. And even though we don't always understand God's timing and we want to keep people close to ourselves, I can honestly testify that God's timing truly is the best. I would like to take you along on this journey this whole journey of my mom who got a stroke, ended up in the hospital, and then she passed away, where Bart and I were present, just the three of us. And it was a very beautiful moment. And I know that might sound very weird, but God was so present in that moment. And the whole journey has been with him in the center. He was there all the time. He never left us, he never forsake us. Let's just go back, how it all started. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself, if you don't know me and you're new to the channel, and then I'm going to con continue the story about my mom. My name is Fien, I'm 42 years old, I live in the Netherlands, and my parents got divorced when I was six years old. After the divorce, I went living with my mom, and my childhood wasn't too great, I must say. My mom got into a relationship with a guy who abused her physically and emotionally and that was from my 6th until my 12th. And that actually set the base for the relationship that I had with my mom because I always thought, you know that I'm suffering from the relationship that you are in, um, why don't you choose me? Why don't you choose your child and not a guy over a child when you're not even happy in a relationship? I never understood it and it was a kind of resentment that I built towards my mom and I always held it against her. And that childhood did something to me. Just like anything that happens in your childhood, it forms you. And I was a very problematic girl and later it turned out that I had ADHD and uh, my mom and I were always in a fight so it was kind of hectic when I was a teenager. So then my mom kicked me out of the house when I was 18 and everything happened afterwards and the relationship between me and my mom was always like either we were good or we weren't. <laughs> And there was kind of nothing in between and um, yeah my mom was always complaining to people about me ah oh, fiend this and fiend that and she's selfish and she does this and that so people really had a certain image of me the relationship between me and my mom never was really peachy then in 2019 I became a person of faith because I had an encounter with Jesus and I started walking with him, I started to read my Bible, and that changed me. And I remember that my mom said, yeah, my daughter became a personal fate. Well, let's see how long that will last. Thanks, mom. <laughs> Thanks for your confidence. <laughs> no, it wasn't a fling or just an impulsive thing that I wanted to try out. I just had an encounter with Jesus I realized how incredibly valuable I was to God and how much He loved me and that changed everything. And the Bible also says we love Him because He loved us first. And once you get a hold of that love that God has for you and you feel it in every fiber of your body, you're like, oh my goodness, this is everything that I've been searching for my whole life. Can you imagine? I was living in the world for 40 years and I was just doing my thing and I always knew about God, I always knew about Jesus, but I never was a follower of Jesus because I thought when you become a person of faith, you're not allowed to do anything anymore. <laughs> that is such a lie. So once I started to walk with Jesus and my thinking got renewed, things changed. But my mom and I were in a fight that time. It was around about March, April 2019. After walking with Jesus, the Holy Spirit revealed himself to me. I, I felt things and, and I got into situations that was so directed by God. And 
I will record a video about it because it's really amazing what God can do in your life through His Spirit, His Holy Spirit. So then my uncle, who is um, the lead pastor of our congregation, he asked me in August, Fien, there's going to be a baptized service in September 2019. Would you like to be baptized? You don't have to answer right away. Think about it and just let me know. But with all the things that I, that I had been through until that time, I was like, yeah, it is time. I'm ready. I'm so ready to leave my old life behind and to start a new life in Christ and just see how everything will go from there. I got baptized in September 2019. And even though my mom and I had beef <laughs> at that time, I decided I wanted to invite her. So I prayed about it and I was so nervous when I had to call her because usually she's either not picking up the phone or she's just being a little bit harsh or, or something when you call her. So I called her and she was super sweet and super friendly and I was like, oh yes, thank you. So my mom attended the baptism service and she was crying the whole time and it was actually the first time that I saw her since a very, very long time. And after the service, she gave me a hug and she said, I have a totally new daughter right now. <laughs> that was so sweet. And, and it was true. When you get baptized in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, your old life is in the water. It's in the grave, you buried it, and you are a new creation in Christ. And that made such a difference for, difference for me as a person, but also for my relationship with my mom. So afterwards, we had a lovely dinner at my uncle and aunt's, and um, yeah, it was a very, very special moment because also my mom was there and my dad was there, even though they were divorced, they were really buddies and they went out for eating pie together or meeting somewhere downtown. It was really good to see that they connected again because my mom could be very unfriendly towards my dad and I never liked it. So I said, if you cannot say anything good about someone, just don't say anything at all. So she learned and she progressed and my mom always was a believer. <laughs> um, she found it a little bit hard to read the Bible, but she had her own walk of faith with the Lord. And my dad, he um, became a person of faith after my mom and he got divorced. And he prayed for over 30 years for me to become a person of faith as well. So parents, if you're watching, keep praying for your children because it will happen in God's perfect time. Anyways, my mom was there, my father, my favorite cousin Melvin was there, and we really had a very, very great day. In the months afterwards, so many things happened. I progressed in my faith and I grew stronger in my relationship with the Lord. And then December happened. In December 2019, I decided to travel to my mom for Christmas. I was living near the sea and she was living near the German border. I traveled there by train and by bus because I didn't have a car back then. In Arnhem, I managed to snatch uh, a bouquet of flowers because my mom loves flowers. And I knew that she would really appreciate it if I would bring some flowers when I visited her. I arrived at my mom and we said hello and this and that, blah, 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 not nice. As the evening progressed, we were talking about things and she was telling me about her neighbor. Her neighbor was um, a girl, I believe in her 30s something, early 30s. And she supposedly had a relationship with a guy who was abusive and um, that caused lots of noise and, and fights and things like that. So my mom, who was living next to her, um, yeah, she didn't really like it. Maybe it reminded her of her own situation back in the days. 
and yeah, it, it's just not nice when <laughs> the, the lady next door is being molested, of course. So she was telling me that and I felt so sorry and then suddenly I got this feeling in my heart and I was like, I want to give the neighbor the flowers of my mom. It was as if someone said to me, give the flowers you bought for your mom to the neighbor, ring the doorbell and give her the flowers and see how it will go. And I was like, oh, um, oh yay. <laughs> but it felt to me as if the Holy Spirit, God Spirit really was talking to me. And in the months previous to December 2019, I had so many encounters that the Holy Spirit was talking to me. He placed things on my heart. I acted upon it and it always led to remarkable and beautiful situations. So I said to my mom, Mom, I know that this is the first time that you are, uh, you are experiencing this with me, but believe me, when I say that the Holy Spirit is telling me to go to the neighbor and give her your flowers. My mom didn't understand it at all and she got so upset and she said, those are my flowers and this and that, you brought them for me. And I said, I know, but I can always bring new flowers. I just really have the feeling that I need to give your neighbor these flowers. No, she just didn't understand it. And she said, what are you going to say? And like with everything <laughs> with the Holy Spirit, I don't know anything, but God knows. And he speaks through other people, through his spirit, through us. So I explained to my mom, I don't know what I will say, but God will guide me in everything. So whatever it is, I'm just going to do it and he will give me the words. So then I, um, I saw the, the light was on at the neighbor's house, so I rang the doorbell and I believe I could hear her standing under the shower or something, but uh, at least she didn't open the door. And I was standing there with the flowers like this. And yeah, so um, I thought I will try again later. So I got back inside at my mom's and then she said, see, she's not opening the door. <laughs> and I said, I will just try again later, mom. Yeah, she was so moody and she had the face like this and she just didn't understand. She really didn't because she didn't really have a good connection to that neighbor. Uh, my mom said about her, she's not even saying hello. And then I was like, mom, don't you think that when you're being molested and stuff like that and you have to face your neighbors, don't you think that it might be a little bit shame that she's feeling? and that that is the reason why she's not talking to you? Then my mom thought, oh yeah, <laughs> makes sense actually. After a little while, I said to my mom, mom, I'm going to try again. There goes my mom with a face like this. So I grabbed the flowers, I rang the doorbell again, and she opened up and she was beautiful. It was a beautiful Turkish girl and uh, she had her hair in a towel and she was so friendly and, and open and I said, Hi, um, I'm uh, your neighbor's daughter and I would like to offer you these flowers because it's Christmas. And then she said, Oh, that is so sweet. Thank you so much. Um, would you like to come inside? And I was like, Oh my gosh, yeah, sure. <laughs> So I went inside and um, it felt kind of uh, special because the, the house looked really pretty. It looked really tidy and knowing all the things that happened between her and that man, yeah, that, that was really um, something special, you know, because you don't see things on the outside. Things might look really peachy on the outside, but you don't know what's going on between four walls when nobody else is present. So we sat on the couch and we just had a talk and um, I explained that I had such a strong feeling that I had to go to her to give her the flowers. We had such a beautiful talk. It was really amazing and she even said that I was sent by God 
to her with those flowers, she also agreed that it was really a godsend. So we really had a nice talk and uh, she told about her son who was living in Turkey. And then all of a sudden I had this feeling, can I pray with you or can I pray for you? And I had no idea what I could expect. But she said, yeah, that would be very nice, thanks. So I, I held her hands and I don't remember what I said, but I prayed over her and I, I prayed for her. I prayed for her son in Turkey and I prayed that uh, God would keep her safe and things like that. And I thanked him for that encounter because it was so special. And then um, I went back to my mom and, and that was it. We exchanged phone numbers, the neighbor and I. And uh, she even sent me a text later that she was so surprised and she really appreciated that I came by with the flowers. And when I came at my mom's, my mom was like, what did she say? <laughs> so I told my mom what happened and the things that we spoke about. And my mom was really surprised. My mom really was like, oh my gosh. So it had a purpose, you know, the feeling that you have in your heart and you act upon it, it had a purpose. So that was <laughs> one of the Christmas days in 2019. And without us knowing, that laid the foundation for everything that happened later. In the months after December 2019, my mom and her neighbor grew very close. They were talking about their gardens, they were talking about flowers and plants, and everything was reconciled. And that is what God does, you know? God wants unity. The devil wants separation, but God wants unity. So after all, everything has been for a purpose when I gave the neighbor my mom's flowers, which she didn't like at first. <laughs> In January 2020, I was talking to my mom on the phone and the conversations that we had since I became a person of faith really deepened. My mom always loved to gossip about people. I never really liked it. But now our conversations was uh, about God and about Jesus and about going to church and the things that I learned and the things that the Holy Spirit made me do. And it was amazing. My mom and I never had such cool and wonderful conversations since I became a person of faith. So I asked my mom, mom, if you really would like to step into uh, your relationship with God and, and get more out of it, um, you can read the Bible. Would you let me buy you a Bible? You know, a Bible in normal language, not a very fancy King James version or something. And she said, oh, no, nah, yeah, okay, yeah, that's, that's okay. So that evening, I ordered a Bible for her, which already got delivered the next day. So my mom, she felt kind of ambushed and she said, we only discussed this yesterday and now I already have it. Did you already send it before me agreeing to it? That was my mom. <laughs> and I said, mom, no, I ordered it online and they just happened to deliver it very fast. She was reading the Bible and sometimes I would ask her mom, uh, what have you read? Can you share? And she said, that's none of your business. <laughs> and I said, okay, it's your walk with the Lord. So do whatever. <laughs> In the months afterwards, uh, my mom and I grew closer and uh, we spoke to each other regularly. And uh, it, it was really amazing how God turned everything around, everything that happened in our lives, uh, the fitties that we had when we were younger, in my childhood, all the resentment that I felt towards her because of yeah, the, the, the poor decisions she made in relationships that also affected me. When I learned in May 2019 about the forgiveness that Jesus is calling us to, that Jesus was hanging on the cross and the people who nailed him to the cross, that he was like, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. And then I was like, whoa, that is really the ultimate forgiveness. And if I wanna be like Jesus and he's calling me to be like him, 
it also means that I need to be able to forgive people just like he forgave us while we were still sinners and that really changed me and that also changed the relationship with my mom and I'm very very thankful for that and I'm very thankful that the last months of her life uh, were great she um, had lots of nice friendships and even though she was in the house a lot also because of covid and all the lockdowns and everything that happened um, my mom was also very sick my mom was walking with a walking frame uh, she had a very bad back she had osteoporosis she had asthma she had to take medicines in the morning and she had this little basket and then she would write down what she would take and how many and when and th this was a whole administration and my mom was always in pain she was always in pain she couldn't sit from the pain in her back she couldn't sleep properly which means that she got very moody a lot because of the pain maybe you can relate that when you are in pain yeah you're not one of the most uh, joyful persons in the world so that happened to my mom as well and my mom always said I just want to be with the Lord I want to be in heaven better yesterday than today and then I always said no mom it's not your time yet God knows when your time is but it's not now and sometimes people asked her well if God does exist why are you in so much pain because can't he heal you from your pain? I mean, you're still so loyal to him and, and you are having faith, but where is your God now? Why isn't he healing you? And then my mom always used to say, I don't know why, I still believe in him and I keep searching for him and I will keep persevering. And she just held on to God and I found that always very, very beautiful and she tried to attend church every Sunday morning as often as she could with her walking frame <laughs> and then my mom got the news that she was scheduled for a knee surgery on the 14th of August 2020 because of all the pain in her back my mom was stressing out about the surgery for months and months already God spared her that surgery in July 2020 I met the man that I prayed for, I met Bart. I told my mom about it and she was very happy. She was very happy. He was also a born again Christian and that we were faithful to God's word, that we agreed on not sleeping with each other until we would be married one day and that we would not live together until we would be married one day. And she was very, very excited for me and she was looking forward to meet Bart. So. After a month, on the 1st of August 2020, my mom and her best friend Cora came up to my house at the sea and we had such a wonderful day. It was so great that she could meet Bart and that they got along so well and they were laughing and, and everybody was having such a good time. And then at the end of the day, we went to Uncle Gerry and Aunt Jane's for a nice dinner and of course Uncle Gerry prayed over us. And it was really, really a valuable moment. I remember that um, when we said goodbye, my mom gave Bart a big hug and she said, um, yeah, uh, will you come and visit me anytime soon in Westerford and come have a look at my little housey? And then he said, yeah, sure. So then uh, she and, and Cora went home again and we really looked back on a very, very, wonderful day the next day was august 2nd 2020 my mom called three persons i believe it was rietje tante l and my dad to tell them how wonderful she's had it with us and how much she liked bart and that she was so happy that i was so happy that was so sweet that she did that unfortunately in the evening she had her stroke i believe it was around nine or something in the midst of her beloved garden, her beloved plants, she had the stroke and she fell and she was rushed to the hospital. But unfortunately, I heard it only the next day. 
um, the neighbor tried to reach me several times but I didn't pick up the phone and then she sent a WhatsApp voice clip but because her Dutch wasn't very good I only could hear that she said your mom fell and that I had to call her back and I thought okay it's already past midnight it's a bit late to call I will call them tomorrow so the next day Cora my mom's best friend called me and she asked have you heard about your mom and I said yeah she fell or something right and then Cora said it's a little bit more serious than that so she explained that my mom had a stroke and that she was at the intensive care unit in a hospital in Nijmegen and I was like what we have to go there so I called Bart and he had his son for three weeks because it was the holidays and I told them you are the one with the car uh, you are my guy we need to go there so Bart had to rearrange everything fortunately his parents could take care of Sam and we raced to the hospital in Nijmegen and then it was so surreal to be seeing my mom there laying with a tube in her throat and with all the monitors going bleep 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 and all the doctors who were working on her and I thought oh my goodness the timing of things was really really amazing God's timing really really is perfect because the thing that happened when my mom had a stroke that evening before and she fell coincidentally well not very coincidentally because things never are a coincidence in God's kingdom the neighbor was sitting in her garden with one of her friends they heard my mom falling and then she was mumbling like ow 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 so they were like what's going on so they walked around the garden and my mom was living at a corner and in the fence she had these plastic windows so then they were seeing my mom laying there in a pile of blood so they handled very quickly so they called um, the emergency service they called 112 in the Netherlands um, the friend of the neighbor climbed over her fence got to my mom uh, opened up the gate for the neighbor to come in um, the most remarkable thing is that the neighbor was very afraid of blood she didn't want to have anything to do with blood if she had to draw blood someone always had to come with her because she was so scared always but my mom was laying there and she was severely bleeding because she fell with her on her head and the neighbor took her head and she she put it in her lap to give support and she was covered in blood and for someone who cannot stand blood it, it was very very traumatic so fortunately uh, the ambulance was there very very fast and they brought my mom to the hospital but they had no contact information or or anything so they had to act very quickly so they decided to operate on her so they operated her um, in the front here of, of, of her head and then they put a drain inside to get rid of all the fluids that would come out of it and only the next day I heard about all of that and I was so amazed about God's timing that the bridge that was built in December between my mom and the neighbor and the flowers that I gave that I had it on my heart that their relationship got restored that they grew close together and that the neighbor with that friend happened to be in her garden when my mom had that stroke and she fell so that they could help her out and she, my mom got the help that she needed it was really really amazing and I I thank God for that I, I thanked God that that bridge was built between my mom and a neighbor that she was found so quickly and that she was operated on and that there still was a slight chance that she would get out of it of course I wanted to stay with my mom as often as I could so I decided to stay in her house in Westerfort and Bart would go back to his place again in Rijnsburg because of course he had his son to take care of for a couple of weeks and he would come over to uh, the hospital as often as he could it was a very very hectic period of time 
but I also must say that I have seen God working in that time. I was praying over my mom a lot. I was reading Psalms to her from her Bible. Uh, Bart was reading Psalms to her. We prayed over her. We proclaimed good things over her. And the whole period of time was one of moving forward and then setbacks. Moving forward and then setbacks. And I remember the first uh, family conversation that we had with the surgeon. It was really an eye-opener because my mom was so fragile, you know, with the osteoporosis. Um, they decided that they would not uh, revive her if her heart would stop because, yeah, her ribcage wouldn't last. And then she would have more damage than before. So we decided, okay, what is the procedure? Uh, she had a tube, uh, a respiration tube, do I say that well? And what happens if they take it out? Okay, chances are that she might pass away and things like that. So we discussed every scenario. And I also decided that if the moment would come that the doctors would not have any hope anymore and the doctors would not be able to do anything for my mom anymore, then it would be better to let her go. It was a very, very difficult decision, but I knew where she would go. I knew that if she would breathe out her last breath, that she would be in heaven with the Lord and that that would be her um, full, full uh, healing and that that would be uh, the thing that she always wanted. So we decided that and it wasn't easy, but I knew that was the, the right thing to do. In the hospital, I've had many, many special encounters. I prayed over my mom, I prayed for the whole ICU, and it was amazing what happened. Uh, there was a guy lying there, and he was already in a coma for two weeks. And after my mom was brought in and I was praying over her and praying over the whole unit, uh, that guy woke up from his coma after two weeks and everybody was really surprised except me because I was like that is the resurrection power of the Lord and another person who was also at the ICU for a while he suddenly was released because he healed from this and that so that was so amazing and also the, the talks that I had with the people and uh, the encounters that I had in the hallways it was one big period of um, encounters, a divine appointments, as I called it. And it was really, really beautiful. And then the moment came that the doctor said that they could not help my mom anymore and that it was time to let her go. Even though I was prepared for it, it also was very, very hard. So on the Wednesday in August, they removed the tube and the prognosis was that my mom would pass away within a couple of hours. So the evening before, uh, lots of family came by to the hospital and they said goodbye to my mom and things like that. And uh, Uncle Gerry and Aunt Jane were there on the Wednesday when they removed the tube. Uh, Bart was there and we prayed over my mom. And the funny thing was, that when they removed the tube, my mom was awake. She was awake because this whole time she was either uh, unconscious and then she had a little bit of a revival and then she got unconscious again because of all the brain damage. But that Wednesday, she was wide awake and she was smiling. Uh, she could not speak, but she was smiling and uh, we were all like, that is really remarkable. <laughs> so the hours passed and um, eventually Uncle Gerry and Aunt Jane went back to their hotel again and Bart had to go home because he had to work very early the next day. And it was just me and my mom. So I was just talking to her and, and playing worship music and things like that. And then suddenly the door was opened from her from her room and someone passed by in the hallway and she was like and i thought what 
she's waving to people right now. That was so, so remarkable. And before I left, because I, I uh, laid on her bed and I fell asleep for a moment because I was so tired. Um, and then when I woke up, um, yeah, my mom was looking at me and I said, hey, mom, you're awake. And um, yeah, that was really remarkable. So I said, you know what? I will go home now, but I will come back tomorrow, okay? And I have a little uh, clip uh, from it, fortunately. Some people call me crazy because I'm always recording content. But there comes a day that photos or videos are the only thing that you have from a person. And I'm very, very thankful for all the content that I have with my mom in that period of time. Before I went home, I said to my mom, uh, okay mom I'm going now I prayed over her I read a psalm from the Bible and then when I went away she was waving at me and I thought hey I have to record it so I said oh wait mom let's do it again so I recorded it and said bye mom and then she waved at me like this and it was so cute and um, then she wanted to take out that that tube in her nose and I said no no don't take it out, just leave it there. I will see you tomorrow. Bye, I love you. And then I went away and I, I closed the sliding doors. And when I was on my way uh, to her house, I got an emergency phone call from the ICU that the situation of my mom was really getting worse all of a sudden. And if I wanted to say goodbye, I had to go there ASAP because I might be too late. And I was like, Oh my gosh, so I went to her house, I grabbed some sleeping stuff and my, my toothbrush and everything like that, some clothes, and I went back to the hospital again. And that night, uh, my favorite cousin Melvin was there because he didn't want me to be alone. And Bart was at his home for his work, of course. So Melvin uh, stood guard with me. He slept in the family room and I slept with my mom in the ICU on, on, on a chair. And the next day she was removed to another room and um, all the as they call it life extending uh, things were removed so you know the the thing that is uh, giving her fluids and stuff like that so I knew that that was actually the time that I had to say goodbye because she would pass away and that was the Thursday the 20th 2020 so there was more family coming by to say goodbye um, it was very emotional and um, I remember that at one point um, I must say that I that I was kind of strong this whole time uh, because God was carrying me the Lord really was carrying me through it all um, but I remember that one time on that Thursday that I was holding my mom's arm and I was crying so hard and I said mom I don't know I cannot be without you I just can't and, and what am I supposed to do without you and I was crying so so hard and even though my mom's brain was so damaged you know that that body was decaying actually already but the spirit is still there you know the spirit is still alive and it was also God's spirit in her and do you know that when people are in a coma that you always have to watch what you're saying because they can hear you that is the spirit that is the spirit that is still alive and still active so when I was crying my eyeballs out and I, I was like, Ooh, like that. And I was so, so upset. My mom was crying with me. She, she was crying and I, I saw tears rolling down her face. And I was like, oh my gosh, oh, that, that was so remarkable. And yeah, of course I took a photo of that because I found it so, so beautiful. So that even though she was far out of it, she felt my emotions and she felt my pain and her breathing was very uh, very heavy 
she was really fighting everything and and you could see the struggle that she had like <sighs> and she didn't want to die and um i was telling her mom it's okay it's okay to let go go to the lord he's waiting for you it's okay i got barred it's okay to let go you can go home now but yeah, like I'm always saying, God's timing truly is perfect. And that Thursday just wasn't his timing yet. So the next day on the Friday after his work, Bart came to the hospital again. And um, yeah, that was the moment that, uh, that we will remember for the rest of our lives. Bart arrived at the hospital on Friday the 21st of August 2020, round about 6.30. We had something to eat, um, he read a couple of psalms to my mom, and then suddenly I was feeling that the end was coming near. My mom's breathing was very heavy. I don't know if you have witnessed something before like that, that the breathing is getting heavier and heavier and then all of a sudden it's getting slower and slower and the pauses in between uh, are getting longer until someone really breathes out his or her last breath. So one of my uncles uh, would come to say goodbye to my mom but I called him around uh, 9 or so and I said hey uncle uh, I know you're on your way already, but I really feel as if this is the last moment that I have with my mom. So I really would like to uh, be with her and Bart only. So I hope you understand. So fortunately he understood. Afterwards, I really, really could feel it in my spirit that the end was near for my mom. I don't know why, I just felt it. So I started to pray over her and I shoved away the chair that I was sitting on and I knelt next to her bedside. I was holding her arm like this. I bowed my head and I was praying and I was surrendering everything to the Lord. And then Bart came beside me and he laid his hands on me. He was praying in tongues over me. And then all of a sudden I said, Father, into your hands I commit her spirit. And then she breathed out her last breath. That was so remarkable. The silence was insane because she was breathing all the time and then suddenly she stopped breathing and I looked up, I looked at Bart and I was like, is she gone? And then we were like, whoa. And the moment that I said, Father, into your hands I commit her spirit, those were also Jesus' words on the cross before he passed away. Bart said that the moment I said those words, that she, he saw her breathing out her last breath. And he looked at the clock and it was 21.30. And we looked at her and she had this peace over her. It was really beautiful. And she was struggling for a few days already because you, you could see that she didn't want to go. And God's timing is simply so perfect because even though I was saying, Mom, it's okay, you can go home, you can go to the Lord, uh, it's fine, a Melvin is here, my cousin. God knew that I needed Bart next to me. And God knew when the appointed time was to bring my mom home. And the moment that I handed over her spirit to the Lord, he took her home. And it was really, really amazing and really beautiful. So once we realized that she was really gone, I started praying again over her and I thanked the Lord for his timing and I thanked him for his goodness. And um, I texted my uncle Gerry and I said, uh, my mom is gone. Can you please notify the family because I'm not up for that right now Bart and I took a seat on the stretcher because we were supposed to uh, sleep at the hospital that night and We just looked at my mom We just looked at her and we were just silent and yeah, we realized it, it was gone, all the moments, all the things that we've been through with her in the, the previous weeks. It was over. 
her struggle was over. She finally had the, the ultimate healing that she longed for for a very long time already. And we just sat there for 10 minutes like, oh my gosh, this is, this is really something special. And then I had to call for a doctor, of course. So a little bit later, uh, someone came, uh, one of the nurses, I believe. And um, he said, I'm not officially allowed to say anything, but I think that you are right. So then we had to wait, uh, wait for another doctor to really confirm uh, her death. But that took very long. So eventually, um, it took like hours before someone came and then we were sitting there in that room with my mom who, pa who, was, who was passed away and it was kind of weird <laughs> so I just sat there with my mom and I just I just talked to her I, I, I just touched her arm and her hand and um, yeah I was just very happy that she finally was at peace and that she was with the Lord in heaven and I cried, of course. I mean, even though the moment of her passing was really beautiful and totally not something sad, of course, I got sad a couple of hours later and I, I cried and, and I was so, so incredibly sad because I just could not imagine a life without my mom. But I also saw God's goodness in everything. And that is what carried me through everything, that I know that God is always present. No matter what storm we are facing and in what pit we fell, God is always there to get us out and to carry us. And that is something that I really can testify about, that God's timing really is perfect. And of course I was sad and of course I was grieving, but the moment of my mom's passing was so special and it was really something between her barred me and the Lord and it was something that we will never forget for the rest of our lives and I'm thankful I'm really thankful that God was there and that he carried us both Bart and I through the whole uh, through the whole period of time after my mom's passing so many things had to be arranged for I'm her only child so I had to take care of the administration her house needed to be cleared but fortunately, I had lots of sweet uncles and aunts who helped me with that. All the furniture of my mom was able to be transferred to the house of Bart. So that if we're going to be married one day and going to live together, my mom's furniture is already there. So she is always kind of present. And this is how God also provides for us. He really is Jehovah Jireh. He is our provider. And all the furniture from my mom that is transferred to Bart's house were things that he was actually lacking. So this is how God also provided for him and I'm very, very thankful for that. So right now it is um, almost a year ago that my mom passed away and so many things have happened in the past time. And even though I must say God is carrying me very well through everything, there are also times that I'm also very, very sad. And the remarkable thing is that those moments are always in my quiet time. You know, how you go through the day and you're busy doing this, that, uh, working, uh, helping out people, and just living life. But then in the morning or at night when I have my quiet time with the Lord, those are the times when I really feel the emotions and how much I miss my mom and how much I would have loved her to be present and to tell her things and the things that I'm going through but she's not here anymore and the only thing that's really a big comfort is to know that she accepted Jesus as her Lord and Savior and that she is saved for eternity. I know that my mom is in heaven with the Lord and that I will be seeing her again one day and we will be walking down streets of gold in heaven and that is really the hope that I have for the future and that is also the comfort that I have 
about my mom because I miss her. I miss her terribly. But I also know that her body was, it was just done. She had so much pain always, all day, every day. And it really affected her, her mood. And now she's in no more pain. She has a renewed body in heaven and she's finally healed. And she also doesn't have any emotional pain. All the pain that she was carrying with her from her childhood and all the relationships afterwards, God restored it all. And that is really the biggest comfort that, that he can give me, knowing that she is with him. Well, this was my story. This was a very long story, but I just really wanted to record it. I just wanted to document it. And I hope it will inspire you guys to really trust God's timing and to really trust His decisions, even though we don't always understand. God is always present. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. And in every storm, Jesus is there. And there's nothing to fear when you're walking with Him. So I hope this will be inspiring. Uh, if you're not walking with Jesus, I would really invite you to get to know Jesus, to learn about Him, to walk with Him. And I can promise you that that is the missing piece of the puzzle of your life. That void that you are feeling, that you try to fill with all sorts of things, men, women, hobbies, gadgets, parties, whatever, that void in your heart can only be filled by Jesus. I can truly testify about that. So thank you for watching. I hope you liked it. I hope you find the stories amazing because that is who he is. Our God is amazing. I will be recording lots of more videos for you guys because I have a new camera. I'm very, very happy with it. And I will be seeing you in the next one. So God bless you guys and see you in the next one. Bye.